order. Roll call of Roll call of Alderman. Alderman Hazel? Here. Alderman Kinsella? Here. Alderwoman Husa? Alderman Bittner? Here. Alderman Randall? Here. Alderman Tyler? Here. Alderman Anthony? Here. Alderman Ovian? Here. Alderwoman Schaefer? Here. Alderman Dentleman? Here. Alderman Gott? Here. Alderwoman Steele? Here. Alderman Wygott? Here. Alderman Elmore? Here. Alderman Wigington? Here. Alderman Barfield? Here. Alderman Pusa is excused. Roll call of department heads, please. City Treasurer Hart? Here. City Attorney Horner? Here. Police Chief Bill Clay? Here. Fire Chief Tom Poor? Finance Director Jamie Matrit? City Engineer Tim Gregowitz? Here. Director of Maintenance Ken Vaughn? Here. Human Resource Director Sherry Faber? Here. Director of Parks and Recreation Debbie Belvo? Here. Health and Housing Director Bob Sabo? Here. Director of Public Works Jason Poole? Here. Director of Wastewater Royce Carlisle? Here. Director of Economic Development, Anissa McCaskill. Here. And Director of Library, Leander Spearman. Here. Jamie's absent. Oh, Jamie's excused. She's on vacation. Chief Ford will be here. And Chief Ford's on her way, yes. He just called. Uh, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, if you would please would join with me and stand and pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. We do have a public hearing this evening, and I'm going to officially open the public hearing at 7.02 p.m. And uh, the pur purpose of the public hearing, it was properly uh, advertised. It's regarding vacating an easement on Freedom Drive. Uh, the legal description was posted, and this was basically, I think, in a, in a nutshell, it's cleaning up. There was an easement um, that was established many years ago before these properties were even in the city um, for utilities, but it was never needed. And uh, they're just, uh, this, this group of owners they have now had come to us a while back. It took us a while for everybody to research it, every department to make sure we didn't need it. But after uh, reviewing it, uh, everyone has uh, agreed that there's no purpose for this uh, easement and it's just simply vacating it and cleaning up some old paperwork from many years ago. So are there any comments, questions, concerns during this public hearing about this advertised vacating of this easement on Freedom Drive? Yes, in the back. easement has anything to do at all with any problems they're having far as the tenants or visitors is strictly about the uh, uh, way it was designed years ago and the fact that we never put a utility into this particular strip, strip of ground but thank you for your comment anybody else yes sir Michael Hagberg uh, I had a question that when the easement was originally uh, created, was the property owner then paid for that easement, as we do in many other easements, and if we're vacating it, shouldn't that money come back to the city? We didn't own the property. It wasn't in, annexed into the city uh, at the time that those buildings were built. They were all county buildings at that time. You may remember it was only in the last, uh, what, chief, 15 years, 10 years that we annexed Ron Noble came to us to annex those things probably shortly before I became mayor. I want to say it was probably 2001 or two. So we don't have any direct knowledge of what the county did at that time if there was any, uh, the city of Belleville did not pay because we did, we did, they were not in the city at that time. That, that I know for sure. Any other comments? Alderman, do you have any comments or questions about this public hearing? 
Hearing none, I'm going to close this public hearing pertaining to the vacating this easement on Freedom Drive. Uh, before we get started with public participation, I just want to announce as we look in here at the agenda tonight, um, as we get moving in just a minute under presentation, recognitions, and appointments, um, William Steele, who I had uh, put in your packet as a recommended appointment uh, to Fire and Police Commission, had notified me uh, a short time ago, well, earlier today, actually we talked over the weekend, and he has withdrawn his name, so that item will be removed from the agenda. He's withdrawn his name from consideration. Um, so I just wanted to tell you that before I forgot and we got moving on here. At this time, I'm going to open public participation. Before I do that, let me go back. Uh, there's always a few new people. Tonight, uh, we are always very appreciative that Lindenwood has let us host our meetings here. If we did have to vacate the building for any storms or anything like that or leave this room, we would go downstairs and ask you to go to the middle hallway or to the bathroom where there's no, virtually no windows so you'd have a less chance of any flying objects if there was a storm. If there was any smoke or fire, we'd ask that you take the quickest, closest exit and then carefully leave the building. And we would ask, if possible, to go in front of the auditorium and, and congregate so that we can talk to each other and make sure the people sitting next to you or people that you came with uh, are accounted for. So those are just some safety things we wanted to go over. At this time, I'm going to open public participation. I ask that you wait till you're recognized when you raise your hand. Come up to the microphone, give your name, keep your comments to two to three minutes. And, and with the agenda the way it is tonight, pretty jam-packed, please keep it to something that's on pertains to city business, particularly, hopefully, this evening. So at this time, I will open public participation. Yes, ma'am. Wilson, 322 West I Street. Uh, can't believe that four years have already passed, but I'm here tonight. Uh, we have new faces uh, with the aldermen here uh, in regards to crime-free housing, and I would encourage you and ask you to please vote for another four years longer, preferably. But the impact of crime-free housing in the Franklin neighborhood in my area has been phenomenal. If, if I could tell you what was before and what is now, it, it is a different like day and night. In the circumference of just two streets, I Street and H Street, we have uh, about eight landlords that, that I know of. It might be more. Some of them, like Kevin, are fantastic, but it only takes one, just one, to spoil the batch of cookies. And it it is it is unbelievable to craft the change that we have in our neighborhood. So I ask of all of the new council members that are not uh, so familiar and the old council members, please vote crime free housing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else this evening? Yes, sir. Thank you, time. <clears throat> Tom Wester, I have 607 North Church Street. I have a prepared thing I want to read. Uh, I didn't want to go off the cuff on this and, and lost things up. So I'm, I'm going to read this prepared item. I'm bringing uh, an issue to the full attention of the City Council because I don't know if it's been brought forward yet by the Health, Housing, and Building Committee. Uh, I've been having issues in my residence uh, with groundhogs for the last several years. Uh, I don't have a fenced yard and I tether my dogs outside when they have to do their business on 50-foot ropes, bring them in immediately afterwards. On March 28th, my dogs, I have two Boston Terriers, got into an altercation with a fully grown groundhog. One of my dogs was bitten several times on the face, around her eyes. And in the, in the fracas, I got bit by the groundhog and damaged my right knee. Luckily, the, the, the bites that were on my dogs were not serious enough, serious enough to have any veterinary care. I had to go through the full rabies regimen because the groundhog, of course, got away and just had a knee operation, arthroscopic surgery on my knee as a direct result of this altercation. I called the police department on March 28th that evening afterwards to file a report was informed by the responding officer 
There was nothing that the police department could do, and a report was not taken. He suggested that I contact the Health and Housing and Building Department. I did so the next day. I visited the Health and Housing Building Department at 407 North Lincoln and talked to Mr. Robert Sabo. I went through the, with him the series of events that happened the previous day, and he informed me that the city had received reports involving groundhog problems over the last several years, and the city went so far as to investigate the cost and what to do to eradicate or get rid of the groundhogs. The city, after they got their quotes on disposing of the groundhogs, decided that the cost was too expensive, and they decided to try and let the issue, I guess, die a natural death by ignoring it. Uh, now, this is now a couple years later, and the issue is no longer a, uh, a situation of it being a, a housing and uh, problem. It is now a health life safety issue. We have many children in our neighborhood with small animals that play in the yards down there where these <coughs> groundhogs have taken up residence. And I've had as many as six of them in my yard at one time. They come on my back porch and use my wife's bird feeder as a bath to bathe in. They are in my front yard facing North Church Street, eating the seeds and things from the bird feeder my wife puts out there for the animals, for the birds. Now, uh, I believe it is, I was even invited to meet. Uh, I attended several city council meetings and was invited to a meeting of the Health, Housing, and Building Committee to report to the full committee as to what had happened. And the committee at that time voted to put it back out there, find out what the cost would be and what the steps would be to dispose of these groundhogs. And this has been 90 days ago. I have not seen anything come forward on it, okay? Uh, they've begun doing property damage at residences around my house, my house, neighbors' houses. So I don't want to be a bad guy. I, I'm, I've given the city every opportunity, and I don't want to be a bad guy and try and force the issue. But the city has already acknowledged that there is a problem by their efforts to go so far as to find out what it would cost to dispose of them. Sure, if I can. And, and they, haven't, they haven't done anything. Now, you know, one more item. You know, I, would, I don't want to be a bad guy, but I don't want anything to happen to these children that may not have the capability to get away from a groundhog if their baby dog or whatever gets attacked by a groundhog, like I did, and I got hurt. You know, so, uh, I've been advised that, that what happened to me is potentially actionable, but I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there, and I'm hoping that what I'm saying tonight, and I'm sure there are other residents here that have issues with groundhogs in the easements, in their backyards, or whatever, but I'm hoping this gets something maybe pushed off the center and moving in the right direction to get things happening so it doesn't have to become actionable. Sir, we are taking some action. Um, it's a very serious problem. It, when we investigated it some time ago, and we got some quotes from trappers, etc., cetera, uh, the recommended uh, a couple times a year was quotes up to $30,000. And, and that did stymie during a time when the state was holding money and we were 1.5 million at one point, money being held, etc. So it was a became an, it was just never, never denied it, was, it wasn't a serious problem, but it became somewhat of an economic problem with uh, um, finding the money. I can tell you that we are, uh, they had a meeting today. Uh, they're in the process, I think, of introducing some, um, a procedure that we can work on this serious situation. My staff worked on policy and procedures today. We should be unveiling something soon and we are, uh, have researched and we will explain relatively soon because um, we're following all the steps with IDNR and everything we have to because we certainly don't want to get the city in trouble. But we agree with you. We, we certainly respect what you've, uh, what you've been through and some others who have called us, but they're in the parks, they're in the cemetery, they're in a lot of places. They have become a very serious uh, problem for us. And we are trying to come up with some new means of dealing with this 
um, and I think we'll have something to introduce or to start to test real soon. Well, I certainly hope so. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very for much your time. for your time. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, let's go here first, this lady that will slide across to the back. George Shriver, 27 South 10th Street, that would be in Ward 5 of Belleville. And I'm basically just quite concerned about the TIP agreement that we're about to do with Offenberg Ford, considering that in the, in the past, in 1999 through 2015, we had given them $2.36 million already in the TIP. And I don't see that the property value has increased any. And certainly with this new agreement, there's no expectation of the property value to increase. The cost of the, the plans, most of it is purchase of furniture, uh, floor decal on the floor, wall decals. None of this increases property value. None of this increases their sales of their vehicles. I also noticed the uh, discrepancy between on the request was $42 million in sales annually. On the agreement, it was typed up as $24 million. $24 million is in line with the same agreement from 1999. So I would hope that the $42 million is a more accurate number for this time. Um, I'm just opposed to that amount of TIP money being spent when our TIP is running out. I think we have better places where we can spend that money. Thank you. Who's next? This gentleman right here in the suit and tie. Good evening, Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the council. My name is Drew Weber, and I'm here on behalf of Walmart. Uh, there are several Walmart items on your agenda tonight, uh, one of which is a, a uh, special use permit for a convenience store. Then we have site plan and preliminary plan approval. Uh, we've given presentations at some of the other commissions and boards, and so we don't want to necessarily bore you with those tonight. But we have a team of architects, engineers, uh, traffic engineer, and myself here to answer any questions you may have on any of the topics. Uh, we'll be here the whole time, so and uh, let you guys know that we're here for any questions. Thank you. Appreciate it. And if there are specific questions during uh, the time to vote, we will contact you. Okay. Thank okay. you. Anyone else tonight? Back of the room first, and then come back up. George Leonard, Delville. First of all, I think Austinburg skipped out on some taxes a while back and took them to the Cayman Islands or something. I, I might be wrong, but you know, in this day and age, uh, lies are flying around right and left by both political parties. So it's a lie. If it's not true, I'm sorry, but it seems like Jamie got in tax trouble several years ago. And as far as Walmart, Walmart to keep their damn parking spaces as wide as the city codes it specifies. They don't need to make them narrower. Please obey that rule. A billion dollar Kroger grocery stores needs 200000 from the bankrupt city of Belleville to build a grocery store at the Bel Air Bowl side. That's a bunch of BS. There's a billion, one of the biggest grocery stores in the country. And Bruners is their rulers of their little secondary store. A million dollars for a swamp uh, named Bicennial Park already stuck one and a half million plus in park and it's still a mess. Furniture store below Edgemont Hills, we got screwed on that. Overpriced and three times too big. Police station because Bank of Belleville wanted to unload it. Bank is owned by a bunch of bobbleheads and are people who have political connections. Merit home sitting empty for seven or eight years. Walking trails and bike trails, uh, several multi-million dollar bridges over these bike trails. I don't know if we need to spend millions of dollars for bridges over bike trails at this time. I was told women get assaulted along many parts of the trail, but it's never mentioned in newspapers. Every day, one or two armed robberies reported in paper, drug addicts and homeless people all over town. Too many bobblehead aldermen that don't give question the wisdom of many schemes proposed. They just 
or for anything that comes up, they really don't take it out. Stuart, please refrain from any sarcastic comments. Okay, we've had this comment before. I, I think you can say it without being derogatory. Okay, okay, you got just a few seconds yet. Just found this old paper that was going back when the old Jack Flash uh, truck stuff was in the plants, and they was going to make the gambling was going to make Belleville two two hundred forty six thousand two hundred forty six thousand four hundred seventy four dollars for Belleville. Well, that two hundred some forty six thousand that they waste on these gambling machines. Could have been spent on people's restaurants and grocery stores and convenience stores and buying something with Don Rogers and you name it. They just stick it in a gambling machine. It's funny gone. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else this evening? Yeah, front row first, then we'll go back to Michael Hagberg. On the uh, Ottenberg deal. Uh, make it aware that this is not a tip rebate that we're doing. Um, the money that we previously given them has far outweighed any money that they've made into the tip over the entire 30 year of the tip so far. There's the two plus million dollars that have been given in there. Um, so that when you talk about, well, they have to spend the money and then, you know, we'll get it back in property taxes. This isn't tied to their property taxes. So I, I greatly disagree with that. Now on the flip side, there's a tip agreement for Dollar General that's going in where the tip is only funding 7% of the cost of the project. And that's a lot more in line with helping out a business to develop a vacant property and bring more business into the city. So I'll be in favor of that. Uh, I also want to comment that driving around town last Friday night was a nightmare to begin with. Um, Many roads blocked off, many streets couldn't, couldn't pass because of Tour de Belleville. Taxpayers have spent millions of dollars on bicycle trails throughout this city. And wouldn't you think that Tour de Belleville could utilize the bike trails instead of the main roadways to have their tour, especially a bicycle, and also the upcoming 5K runs. Rather than blocking off streets and not allowing vehicle traffic, get the runs to be on the bicycle trails and get them off from the, the main streets. Thank you. Yes, sir, in the back of the room. Yes. Alex McHugh, 1053 West Main Street. TIF is a powerful, powerful tool for economic development, but it continues to draw a tremendous amount of criticism from the public. Nobody wants to see another vacant property. Every city's got it, but nobody wants another one. Uh, but if we believe that Belleville truly has something to offer, then that's got to be reflected. Our value's got to be reflected in the quality and the depth and the width of the deals, the economic incentive packages that we're putting together. Net, 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 this will put at least 2.4 million into the general fund after we reimburse the 1.2 million that Offenberg is asking for. That's good, but it was our money to start with. We wouldn't have lost it until we agreed to. It's not necessarily a bad thing. doesn't mean that we shouldn't still try to put golden handcuffs on Offenberg. Would another city try to lure them away? Sure, we've seen it. Would they pay 100% of the relocation costs? Probably not. Would they require them to own their own building and land? Probably, almost without saying. Can we, with TIF funds, enter into a leasehold improvement agreement, which is what this is, with the lessee and not the lessor, we don't know. And the main thing that we don't know is, what are the current sales tax receipts from Offenberg? If somebody came to you for a million two of your own money, you'd want to know that. You'd want to know what you were getting back when, and you'd want an ironclad agreement to make sure that you were protected if you could. Uh, but again, you've got a duty, a responsibility to try to hang on to Offenberg. We need every income street that we can. Try to put golden hands, handcuffs on if you can. But I think you could go back to the table on this one. 50-50 is meeting somebody halfway. This is 80, potentially 100%, right? Maybe consider also uh, dragging the reimbursement out a little longer, and not just five years where we give up all sales tax revenue 
in the first five years of the thing, maybe drag it out to eight or ten years, and where we retain some of the sales tax revenue during that period and pay it out across a longer time. I think that's about all I have. Thank you. Anybody else? Chief? Police Department. I just want to speak briefly to the crime free uh, ordinance which you guys are going to consider tonight. Uh, first of all, I want to absolutely thank the committee for their work and what they've done over the last four years. I'm happy the fact that they came out and wanted to extend it, but they wanted to do so with a sunset provision. That's the little part there that I think we no longer need. When we came out with this uh, ordinance, it was very controversial at the time. There was a lot of thought given to it. It was put together a lot of input from the community. And we decided on the sunset provision to give you guys that type of check and balance if, in fact, we found that we just were not happy with it, that it was a disaster. That has not proven to be the case. It has worked very well. This is Sergeant Bill Hurley. He oversees the officers in code enforcement that enforce that provision. Uh, he's been very professional with this. They're all investigators. We have done an outstanding job with it. There has not been the threshold issues that we thought we would see as far as Fourth Amendment violations and so forth. That has not happened. There are always going to be some people who are not happy with this program. But it is paramount to me. It is critical to how we fight crime. People always have to have a place to stay, criminals as well. And with this crime-free uh, housing, this ordinance, we're able to be much more effective in addressing those people and getting them out of those, those properties. And I will tell you that we have been very good at protecting uh, victims of domestic violence. If they're in there, we do not target them. They continue to stay. We get the offender out. I don't want to see this uh, ordinance put in a place where it's always leveraged every four years. It works. You always have power, future council members and the mayor, you have the power to amend it or to get rid of it. So I think that it is time that it is proven itself that we just go forward with it completely. If it needs to be amended, then we can amend it. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Thank you gentlemen. I... Give your name, please. Dave Valentine, number six, Manus Drive, Valentine Drive. Up and down Balbo, up and down Manus, up and down 17th Street, the litter, the trash, we pick it up and it just seems to come back. That and the yard sale signs. There's yard sale signs that sit up there for two, three weeks. They finally fall down, nails get in the room. That's a concern. We had an incident, which I talked to you about, many, uh, about a year or so ago, about a family we're having trouble with the kids jumping up and down on the neighbor's car, throwing weights in the, in the throwing rocks in the weight pile. And I don't know if anything's being done about it, but it's still there. Same as last time? The same as last time. Um, rocks in the neighbor's swimming pool. He had to close the pool down. follow up as we, we tackled that once before, but unfortunately, some of these challenges come back. Um, anything else? Hearing none, I'm going to close public participation and move on to the business of the evening. Um, as I told you before, we're uh, withdrawing the appointment of Bill Steele, so we move on to 7B. I'd ask for a motion to uh, recommend the reappointment of the following members to serve on Historic Preservation Commission. For a one-year term, Jack Lachine, Douglas Luna, Keith Owens, Ashley Pollock, and Ryan Wallace. Do I hear a motion? Motion by Alderman Gobb. Do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Schaefer. Any discussion? Roll call. 
Hazel? Aye. Kinsilla? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygon? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. I now ask for a motion to approve um, appointing Alderman Raffi Ovian permanently. I had put him on just fake uh, uh, temporarily to fill the uh, Crime Free Housing Committee uh, portion that says we need an alderman on there. In the past, Alderman White had filled that, but when he uh, was not reelected, that was a vacancy. So I'd ask for a motion to approve Alderman. Alderman. Motion by Alderman Consilla, second by Alderman Diddleman. Any discussion? Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Consilla? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Abstain. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygon? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. Approval of the minutes from the City Council meeting July 3rd, 2017. What's your pleasure? <coughs> Motion to approve the file and receive and file. Motion by Alderman Steele, second by Alderman Schaefer. Discussion. All in favor of receiving and filing the minutes signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Claims payroll and disbursements. I'd ask for a motion to approve the claims and disbursements in the amount of $2,533,286.57 and the payroll in the amount of $872,494.84. Motion by Alderman Anthony, second. Alderman Wigington. Discussion. Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygon? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. I'd ask for a motion to receive and file the Treasurer's Report and Statement of Cash and Investment Report 2017. So motion by Alderman Kinsella, second by Alderman Bittner. Discussion on receiving and filing those reports. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. This time we go to zoning board uh, reports and uh, I will ask uh, for a motion to. Um, you want to go ahead and read? Yeah. 11 okay. A1, 32 May 17, Walmart stores. A request for a special use permit for a convenience store at 1601 South 74th Street and adjoining parcels. Parcel number 07140200031071104090001071104000001 and 07140200032 located in a C2 heavy commercial zoning district applicable section of zoning code 162.248 and 162.515 Ward 8, Zoning Board recommended approval. The motion carries 6 to 0. Do I have, have so, a motion to a motion by Alderman Wigington, second by Alderman Anthony, to uh, approve and have the proper ordinance drawn? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. We go on to uh, number 11B, uh, Economic Development, uh, Alderman Consilla. On behalf of Economic de Development, I make a motion to approve a development agreement with A Night to Remember LLC for the remodeling of the existing facility located at 315 Sherman Street. Motion by Alderman Consilla. Do I hear a second? Alderman Schaefer. Do I hear discussion? Roll call on this item. Hazel? Aye. Consilla? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygon? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. At this time, Alderman Consilla next. I make a motion to approve a development agreement with Marco Investment Group, LLC, for the development of a retail complex loaded at located at 2319 West State Route 161. Motion by Alderman Consilla, second by Alderman Schaefer. Do I hear discussion? Yes, sir. Correction, 2391. Correction, West 2391 West State Route 161. Uh, we have a motion, we have a second to approve this uh, recommended development agreement coming from economic development. If there's no further discussion or questions, roll call. 
Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Obian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dillman? Aye. Ga? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygant? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. I make a motion to approve a development agreement with Offenburg Ford Incorporated for the remodeling of the existing facility located at at 901 South Illinois Street. So motion for second. Alderman, so second by Alderman Wigington. Before I open discussion, Eric, do you want to come up and update? Because there was some stuff emailed out today, and I take it you passed out some of these agreements this updated. I'm going to let Eric, uh, uh, Assistant Director of Economic Development, Eric Schuster, to uh, go over a few points before we get into questions and comments that maybe some of you haven't had clarified yet. Thank you, Eric. Uh, the agreement you have before you, uh, has the red line version, so the, the changes, uh, there's really no difference in the structure of the agreement, uh, just some of the numbers. Uh, so uh, there apparently was a miscommunication on, on some of the, the investment dollars. Uh, the the 1.5 million that was in the original draft of the agreement was really just for the, the improvements that are being mandated by Ford Motor Company. There are some additional improvements to the tune of about 500,000, it could possibly be more, but uh, so a, a total investment of $2 million on the site by uh, off of it. Uh, their ownership or lease of the property is really irrelevant because they're the ones paying for the improvement, not the landlord. Okay. And this is not uncommon from other deals. Yeah, this, this is, uh, I, I'm getting, I've gotten comments as if this was the first time we've ever done a development team. So I know there are some changes and, and things like that, and it's a little bit maybe different deal than, than some of you are used to, uh, but this is really not uncommon in economic development. So the, the, the investment has gone up to $2 million. Uh, the other change was uh, the completion date. We extended the completion date because there, there are some uh, things, you know, with the, with the parking lot, maybe the asphalt that, you know, they have to wait until the plants open next spring. So just to make sure everything gets, gets done on time. So, uh, so that, that percentage that people have thrown at 80 or 100 percent, it's actually 60 percent if they if they don't go over two million in, in investment. Um, just let me add that I spoke to Jamie Altenberg as recently as today, and his comment is to me was that you know he certainly as a businessman hopes that. Uh, the price doesn't soar on what they have to invest. But he did also remodel, remind me and made a great parallel to what we're going through right now. Um, he said, Mary, you're renovating the city hall right now, renovating an older building. Every time you open up a wall or you do anything, you never know what you're going to find and what has to be remedied. He said, I'm hoping that our price is at the $2 million. He said, it could be greater. It may well be greater, he said. But he said to get Ford Motor Company going and locked in and staying 15 more years in Belleville, we, we had to get going. Some had said to me, well, why don't you table it? Um, we're recommending that. And we know from over the years with the last three car dealerships that we have, dealing with Detroit is, is not an easy thing. And uh, that's the reason for some of this. But I could certainly go along with what he was saying about remodeling because we found out since we started our project that the one building's roof was truly shot, that the uh, that the compressor needed to be redone. Uh, we're looking at a host of things that you find as you go along. And uh, he may well be over, but the two million is what they're, so it's gone from the 1.5 to the two million. Um, go ahead, Eric. Well, and just, just to clarify, you know, we, we do a lot of agreements that are, are based on the, the uh, rebate of incremental property tax. Uh, I, I think there will be some increase in, in value because of the, they're really redoing the entire facade uh, and making it, you know, Ford would like other dealers just fill a lot. So there will be some major changes. That, uh, it, it may be assessed differently. Most likely it will, but I can't, can't tell you that. Uh, this is not tied to their sales tax. I mean, we're, it's not a rebate of sales tax. It's it's a reimbursement of TIF eligible expenses. It's really not any different than the agreement we did with the with a night to remember, uh, you know, two items previous to this. Uh, 
So it, it's money that's available in the TIF fund, can be reimbursed to them for those eligible expenses, in, which includes the money. Uh, so that, that, that may be new to some people. Uh, so that may be where some of the confusion lies as well. Uh, and, and frankly, if yeah, it, there's been no threats at all, uh, but there's always a chance that if they can't lock Ford in for another 15 years, that that site goes vacant. And as an economic developer, then it's on, then it's our job to try to fill that corner on one of the busier streets in Belleville. But we're also losing 75 jobs, which do produce uh, income tax and, you know, customers and, and the workers, they, they do eat at those restaurants locally uh, and, and they do, uh, you know, do some business in town. So it's not simply, uh, you know, the, the sales tax that, that would be lost. Uh, plus, you know, this is five years. Uh, the reason for that is because th that's the end of the tip. And so we wouldn't have the funding mechanism available necessarily to to make those rebates. Uh, also, if I, I, someone uh, commented earlier uh, privately to me, you know, why don't we just have a deal with sales tax with them, or, or why don't we just do sales tax? Well, sales tax, we have a lot more freedom to do things with throughout the entire city, as opposed to the TIF, where it's only allowed to use on certain things in that area. So you have a lot more freedom to to do streets outside of the TIF. Uh, if you have more sales tax, you can pay salaries with it. With, with sales tax and do a lot of other things that, that you're not as, as hampered by the tip law. So I just wanted to make that clear as well. So uh, if there's any other questions or, or comments, I'd be happy to, to address them. I already talked about the sales tax. Uh, isn't the take state now taking 2% off the top of our sales tax revenue uh, as of the new budget? We just got notified on that. I don't know if some of you have seen that in some of your notifications, but in this recent budget passed by the state of Illinois, um, we will be being assessed, I guess is the best word, a 2% charge for them handling the sales tax, our money. Uh, and Jamie estimated before she went on vacation that this is going to cost the city about $150,000 less in sales tax starting next year. Um, if you looked at the projections that the Offenberg set up and stated we get 1% on on um, on sale of cars. Um, right. They're also, they, they do sales of parts as well. Right. That are taxed at the full. Now, one of the questions earlier was by someone made a comment about the projection was 40 some million. Um, you have to take in consideration the trade-in values. You, you know, if you trade a car in, that's got to be minus out. But there was a number thrown around, and I think the Offenberg stated that uh, they, in the meeting we've had, that 24 million, I think, is approximately what they uh, Their taxable, taxable uh, amount. You have you also have uh, fleet vehicles or wholesale that is not uh, not taxable as service as well. So, but 24 million would be another 240 thousand dollars approximately of sales tax for us. And then if you turn around and we do know now from the state that we're going to lose 150000 all of a sudden, if Offenberg's not here, now we have a $400,000 deficit in sales tax. And that's also why we can't use sales tax to fund this project. Exactly. Um, we're I mean, as a mayor, I'm glad the state's got a budget. But that didn't solve all of our concerns. If, if everything doesn't line up and start to change, um, it still doesn't mean that we're going to uh, see the same revenue because we saw this past year, as Jamie told all of you, revenue in almost every category has been down every month consistently. Income tax, use tax, motor fuel tax. So we, we're not out of the woods, but we are glad the state has a budget. Um, but this is a concern. Offenberg's been here over 60 years. And as Eric mentioned, there's a lot of residual, it's easy to say, and let's be honest. The other thing I told staff when we talked about this and went back and forth, we do know, and I'm not trying to make a bad situation, but I'm trying to be honest, we do know that November 4th, St. Elizabeth is moving. And uh, I would hate to see, and nobody's threatened us, 
We've had some good conversations. Jamie Offberg and I had a very good conversation again as recently as today. And he told me, as a businessman, it would be easier for him to put all of his under his new potential location that's being planned in Shiloh. But he's been, he feels that Belleville has been good to them over the years and, and uh, that for him to reinvest as much in Belleville because there's a lot of things with an older property, et cetera. Um, Yes, sir. Let's face it, the Offenberg family has a track record of running very successful dealerships. They're going to be reinvesting in the property, increasing more jobs, but also increasing their inventory, which means to increase sales. You know, they're not going to want to sit with $24 million is the projected sales. They're not going to be happy with $24 million if they're going to be investing money to bring this thing back. They're going to be looking to steadily increase that. That brings us all more, more sales tax revenue. They're just not going to sit on their hands. And if you go back and if any of you researched, and some of you might have, I think we provided them the 1999 agreement, right, Eric? I don't know if some of you get that. Some of you requested it. I know a few of you did. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the 1999 agreement, we gave them back 2.1 million over 15 years. Uh, in that agreement that was done by then Mayor Kern and his council, and that vote, I did look it up, it was 16 to zero, and I don't remember any questions or really calls. It was just at that time felt we can't lose another car dealership. And um, I think Eric said it right, there's not been any direct threats, but I think the reality is um, if we can't strike a deal, we could lose Offenberg, and I don't think the city of Belleville um, can afford to lose a, a car dealership. We're down to the last three. So we open it up. Alderman Bender? Why are we at 60% on this agreement? We are at 6% with Marco as far as reimbursement. He said they were basically the same agreements. I mean, 60% of his cost. Yeah, Marco is, is, is investing 1.18 million, and he's getting 80,000 back. Rothenberg's uh, investing 2 million, and getting 1.2 million back. A lot of it goes back to the sales tax generation. And, and jobs. And jobs. And sales tax is what? 1% of 24 million? So it's 240,000. And we're giving him back 240,000. I know it's coming out of a different pie, but that's a break-even point. Yeah. So until then, then, there's, then there's 10 additional years that they're committed to remain at the site. But there's no guarantee they're going to be there. Well, it's guaranteed or else they, if you read the clause under... Yeah, there are penalties clauses. There's a penalties clause in there. They, they have to stay that full 15 years. Are they all that, are they subject to pay us back? Okay. That's in there. Yeah, I, I would not have brought you an agreement that I didn't get coming. Frankly, I, I still think 60% is kind of high. It, it is high. I, I think it's hard to compare apples to oranges, though, when you're talking the high value of the amount of money, the jobs, and the residual um, things that car dealerships bring. Uh, at one time, Belleville had a dozen car dealerships. We're down to three. And, and the other question is for us, so at least he, he, he doesn't own the property, but because he's doing the improvements, we can reimburse him his cost. Yes. Okay, we've done that before. Yes, yes. Okay. Mr. Elmer. Eric, I had an issue with the high percentage last week, and it was only 4.30 this afternoon that this changed. The deal, the structure of the deal, I understand, stayed the same, but the percentage became much more attractive, and again, it was just at 4.30 this afternoon that Mr. Offenberg had been out of town for a week. We had a couple sure. of conversations. And I, and I, tried to and call, I was going to ask questions of staff, and it's, you know, it's summertime. I get that. So, here at the just hours before we're going to vote on this, we're being told, okay, now it's going to be possibly this, possibly that, could be up to this, they might do this. And you explained clearly that they have to spend. Two million, one and a half million is, or 1.2 million is ours that we're reimbursing. Right. So they have to spend 800,000. Well, they have to spend it all up front. They have to spend it all up. They have the whole to, two million. Yes. Okay. Let me stop there. What happens if they don't spend two million dollars in five years on these renovations? 
then we will look at possibly prorating. We, we, you know, no, they have to, they have to come off the board. They have to get five thousand dollar reimbursement, so to speak. We'll cross that bridge. I mean, it's not the first time it, it, that's happened before, and we we sit down with the company, and we don't immediately you know go to the penalties clause. I mean, we sit down with them and, and talk through the situation of why it happened. Uh, you know, it could have been a downturn in their in their particular industry, or. There are any number of reasons something could have happened. If you remember, if you if you remember, the agreement that we had uh, struck with Offenberg in 1999 was amended once or twice by the consuls. Um, he came to us in 2009, I believe it was, because he admitted the economy had, with the downturn of the economy, that he was not meeting because he had dipped below the then 50 employees, and he had dipped in sales. And we came back and we approved. Uh, the amendment because we knew the economy was terrible and if you remember at those times I was very concerned because I would pass Illinois Street and not see anywhere close to the inventory that we're seeing today um, but the economy's turned around he's come back to us he's, he's uh, willing to reinvest and would keep him here for another 15 years uh, we know that there's no secret uh, the 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 Detroit dealerships still want these car dealerships on the interstate. We know we're still fighting that. Belleville, Illinois, has, we're, not, we're, not a, a, we're not getting uh, happy face uh, emails from Detroit. They still want to push the fact because we have fought this, and, and they want them on the interstate. And I understand all that, and, and I'm excited that the prospect of Offenberg being here for a long time, the 80% I thought was just Completely what we're presenting you to here today is 60 percent, and, and we believe, and, and he just got different to me this afternoon, and I just don't understand what would be the big heartburn over waiting till the next meeting so we can. I'm not on finance or economic development. I'm just hearing about this last week. It's 4:30. I get a memo that numbers have changed, and I mean. Are there contractors sitting outside Offenberg waiting to start in the next two weeks? I'm not trying to be ridiculous. No, about but we, we can. What's so unridiculous about just it, waiting till the next council meeting so we can research a little bit more? Right. It, it's securing the city's commitment so that then Offenberg can take it to Ford Motor Company. And lock it in. And lock it in there. And lock it in and not see any more. Um, they can get locked out in the next two weeks? I, I, I'm going to tell you, Alderman Elmore. I, in the 12 years I've been mayor, I've been dealing with several of these automotive dealerships out of Detroit, and they have been they have been very unique in in our dealings. And um, my advice would be, um, you know, last week Eric was on vacation for a week, Mr. Offenberg was out of, out of town for a week plus, and and we missed some of this communication until this weekend, and it didn't get to you until today. But I will tell you, I think with the, with the modifications you have here tonight, uh, the facts are, aren't any different. Uh, the question is, do we want to gamble and take a chance on uh, extending this where Ford Motor Company may not give? He feels pretty confident when I talk to him today that they can get Ford Motor Company based on this agreement that they will stay here, another, allow, allow him to stay another 15 years. I would like to get that locked in. Because the longer it's in the media, the longer it's on social media, the longer some people continue to stew about this, the, I think it less it, the more it weakens our, our chances of locking this in. Alderman Wigginton? Uh, you know, this already passed economic development by and so it's gone through two committees already. It has. Uh, also, uh, the, the numbers are, are there. It's black and white. Uh, three more weeks, and, you know, to, to my esteemed colleague, Mr. Elmore, um, what more discussion are we going to have in three more weeks than what we're having now? I mean, we're pretty much, you and Eric, we're laying out the scenario. What other questions are we going to come back that's going to change our thought process in three weeks? So, you know, it's, it's, you know, there, it's, it's there. We had a chance to read it. We had a chance to digest it. I don't think the I, I a, is going to change our thought I don't know how some of you have been. I've had a couple calls. But two of the three calls I think I've had, uh, I know for a fact that people don't live in Belleville. Uh, and they were very upset, but they don't even live, vote, or pay taxes in Belleville. I think it's our responsibility to make decisions 
based on what we believe is best for our city. And I think taking a gamble to lose this 60 year plus car dealership in this city would be a mistake. Uh, just to add a clarification for Alderman Elmore, I, you had mentioned them expending that, their investment about five years actually. They have to spend the total of their investment now increased to two million by December 31st of next year. Yeah. And so they have to spend all the money up front. We've got five years to reimburse our part. So the, the basis of the agreement didn't change. The only thing that changed was their increase in the investment. Why? Our agreement <coughs> remains the same. And after five years, a lot more acceptable than what it was last yeah. week. I, I don't disagree. I, I think part of that was, and I, I guess, you know, um, Mr. Offenberg's son and you know they had worked with Eric and Anissa, et cetera. Uh, he and I have had uh, some conversations. It started with him contacting me personally uh, some time ago. And I had always kind of was under the impression that the number was a little bit higher, but I didn't say too much that he was out of town. And then when we talked Thursday or Friday of last week, one more time, and then again this weekend, uh, he said, no, I reviewed that too. I I'm telling you, we're going to invest I can, we can commit to two million because I know it's going to be that, and it could be more. He says, "I hope it's not." As a businessman, I hope this is it. But I, I do feel comffortable in telling you. My question was, if it's less, then we adjust. Well, then we would have to. We would have, then we would have to. We would have to sit there. And that's where the. That's where your legal attorney gets involved. Uh, you know, and Eric laid out that wonderful presentation on how we get a return on investment on our business districts and on our TIFs. Uh, and like I said, he would not bring anything to this council that he's not comfortable with. You know, after five years, our return on this investment is going to be pretty gosh darn hefty. Because let's face it, the offenbergs are here to do business. They're not here just to beautify their building and go on their way. They're going to be increasing inventory, increasing sales tax revenue to us. So it's, it's a fact of the matter. These people know how to do business, and they're going to be here doing business. I, I don't disagree. You know, I brought up the finance committee. And I use Laura Buick as an example. They sell 500 cars a month. They got so many cars out there on the back 40 that they've got. Farm ground they bought just so they could store cars. And when I asked Mike, I said, are you going to add inventory? There wasn't any plans to add inventory. They're going to add space when they take the 18 bays and <coughs> reduce it to 12. That's part of the redevelopment. But when you don't add inventory, that scares me. No, they got more inventory today, Alderman Lovey. I mean, there was a time I was scared about inventory. There was a time I went by there and I could count the cars back in 2008, 9 at times. Uh, you could go by there in the morning and you could you could literally uh, be counting how many new cars were there. That's not the case now. They have a they have a full lot. Would I love to see even more? Sure. And I think they're they're if they make this reinvestment again, they made it very clear to me that they're going to do everything they can hard to be totally successful to get there uh, to, to, to really take this thing and move it forward. Uh, like I said, that became a car lot uh, 60 plus years ago at that location. And, you know, they also own the property or lease the property uh, over there next to Denny's, the U cars. I, I would just hate to be the council that takes the gamble to see all that empty. Uh, like I said, right now, we're, we got some positive momentum going in this city in a lot of different directions, and I think uh, locking in Offenburg for another 15 years is, is the right thing to do. Just my, my, my opinion as, as the day-to-day -day manager here. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say that a family-owned car dealership in our town, they would be invested as a family. Inventory or not, they become a part of the community and the children and everybody else as they in 15 years and if you needed something you just call them and they could get something for you this is the way the family owned businesses work roger might not have a lot of inventory but you call him and he'll get it for you you know it, that's just the way it works so i think we need to also focus on the fact that the Offenberg family is investing in wanting to stay in our community and they're their children and, and I believe this is third generation okay. of their family, so I mean, they've been around for a while. Who else? Any other questions for Eric? Or anybody? For Eric, with your discussions and looking at their plans for the development and what they've got in store, there is an there is empty space back behind and across the street. 
they acknowledge that to us. Well, they, they acknowledge that they've got stores some more cars, and I think they get this going. Hopefully, they'll have some more new cars inventory. We talked about that back on Cleveland. Back on Cleveland, they talked about that. We yeah. talked about that. I mean, we have to keep them here before we can see them take the footprint any bigger. But the first step is we got to, we got to, and, and I, if I really thought, I've, I've been, been up front with many of you, if I thought tabling it tonight would have some benefit and that and Eric and I or Nissa were going to be able to bring you some different uh, statistics or facts, I would recommend that. But I think we are at the point where um, we've got this about as good as we can bring it to you. I just wanted to point out they're not landlocked. No, they're not totally landlocked. There's some, there's some, there's some space there, and they know that. And um, I think it's to our benefit to get this thing, this deal secure so that they can make the final uh, uh, arrangements with Ford Motor Company and get us the additional 15 years here in Belmont. That's my thoughts. Father Tyler. Um, I think it would be a major loss for Belvo to lose off of her. You know, but we always preach by Belvo, by Belvo, by Belvo. Um, you know, I would be curious how many of us on this council or even in this room bought their last new car in Belvo. Uh, because I think that's how you keep car dealers in Balboa. My problem with this is, with the 60-40 split, I've asked for the numbers for Offenberg and I was told it was confidential. I was told they were in the top 15 uh, of sales tax paid into the city. So my question is, when the next 14 on that list come to us and say, I want to remodel, and I want 60 percent, the city to pay 60 percent. How do we say no to them? We take a look at each one as it comes. That, that's, that each one's got to be judged, uh, Alderman Tyler, individually. But as we've said before, and if you were around or if you paid attention a couple of years ago, as you know, we were very, uh, and, and there was some criticism levied at a few of us that we were there then about fighting for Wagner Buick. And we did what we believe was right to keep Wagner Buick here in town. And now look at he's he's no longer in the car business, but we got a new distributor, a new uh, French, a new owner out there, uh, Cardinal Buick GMC, and uh, they got their lot filled with more cars than we've seen, and I don't know when, and they're selling cars, and and we can tell it because uh, we've seen some increase in just our sales tax numbers since the few months they've been here. So my whole thing is we've already been well paid back. Uh, am I correct, Eric, on what we gave out to uh, Wagner Buick deal? But, you know, there were some at that time said, well, I'll let them go. Once you lose a car dealership and you no longer have 250 to maybe up to $300,000 a year in that sales tax, it's gone away. You're not going to get it back. Uh, when we're struggling to keep them from going to the interstate, I think it's going to be very difficult to bring one of those dealerships, those franchises, back to Belbo. So all I can tell you is what we know, and we know that our three car dealerships still bring us a significant amount of sales tax alone. Not to mention property tax, not to mention the jobs, not to mention the other residuals that people come to town shopping for cars, might buy a hamburger or gas or go to the, go to the pharmacy or Target or wherever. That's all additional that we can't really put a figure on. But I will tell you, I am, I am awfully, awfully happy that we have been able to keep thus far these three car dealerships in Belleville because they are very important at a time when we've seen Belleville have to change in so many ways uh, over the years. They're, those three dealerships are extremely important and the revenues that are reoccurring, um, I would just be shaking right now and we all would be and we'd have some major decisions if we couldn't have kept Rusty Wagner, or if we can't keep Offenberg here, we will have some major challenges to, to decisions to make. They're big, and, and that's the difference between the other people coming to us. These are some big dollars for the city in any given year. Question, uh, question to Eric. Um, Eric, what, uh, what is the amount of sales tax do we get from the uh, sale of used cars by any of the dealers? Is there a percentage? Jamie could have rattled yeah, that there, off. There is a percentage, and at the top of my head, I can't remember what that is. It's it's uh, it's different formula than the one percent. Yeah, right, right, right. But we but when they're selling uh, so, a, a large volume of used cars, we're glad they're in town right, too. Right. 
Okay. Any other questions from the council? Mayor, I wasn't really done. Um, the 24 million, and that could very likely be much higher than that. Do you think? 24 million in sales. Uh, it, it's possible. We, and we believe it's going to grow, Alderman Tyler. I don't think it's going to stay there, but we can't. They can't predict. Right. That. No, I'm not asking us to ask yeah. for more. Yeah. I'm just saying. The agreement in 1999, I believe that was 24 million also. Yes, and it was. They had a one million dollar investment, and we paid them back over 15 years, 2.1 million. So I'm just saying, you know, it's very likely cars are a lot more expensive than they were 18 years ago. Right. So well, I would and, certainly. And, and that agreement, and I, I didn't. Uh, I either just started at the city or regardless I didn't work on that agreement so uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that if that was total sales or just taxable sales so there's a difference because the, the, the 43 million that was being thrown around that included all those non-taxable items like service and, and uh, uh, you know wholesale and things like sure. that so uh, I think that that may be the difference between uh, that agreement and, and this one yeah, I don't have it in front of me. But I think the potential there is for this to be more than $24 million. It is. Okay. Thank you. So we have a motion, correct? Is that? Yes. Motion and a second to approve this development agreement. That's correct, right? <coughs> to approve this uh, development agreement, um, 11B, uh, number three, with uh, Offenberg. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. If I may, Scott, could you hand me I understand the numbers pretty darn well. Um, in the mid to late 1970s, I was an undergrad student at Illinois State University. I wrote a research paper on the impact of unfunded state mandates. Lieutenant Governor Dave O'Neill, who was a Belleville resident, was very gracious in sharing information from the committee he chaired on the Special Commission on State Mandated Programs. As you ask yourself, what the heck does this have to do with this agreement, please allow me to explain. If you spend any time in public service or about to read local as well as other publications related to state spending, you've undoubtedly become familiar with the consequences associated with unfunded mandates. Essentially, it means that while the state feels it's important to provide some service or good, it puts the burden of financing this new enterprise on local municipalities which passes the cost along to its taxpayers. It's what I call the Three Stooges Syndrome. For example, the federal government may mandate states to provide for and administer a particular program and provides little or no methodology for funding. The state then begins the process of initiating the new program and finds it needs to be administered at a local level, thereby creating another mandate, unfunded of course. Your local municipality then turns to the taxpayer and says, we need more money. Are you feeling a bit like that victim of circumstance yet? Now with the advent of TIF, new players have entered into the game. We now have the private sector stepping into the realm of unfunded mandates. Ford Motor Company tells its franchise holders they need to update its stores to reflect the corporation's new store theme. All stores should reflect this new strategy, the, the cost to be borne by the franchise owner. The franchise owner, on the other hand, turns to the city to fund its obligation, thereby sticking the taxpayer with their unfunded mandate. While the fa facade improvement program generates a great many benefits, the cost of this request is out of bounds. Putting 60% of the burden on taxpayers is ridiculous. It's my opinion, and those of the constituents who have contacted me, not one in favor of this, that we need to stop thinking of TIP as an entitlement program for the private sector. Thank you. Okay. Amen. Hearing all those comments, um, we have a motion and we have a second on the floor. At this time, I'm going to call for a roll call vote. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? No. Randall? No. Tyler? No. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? I got a hold of my nose and I'm going to say yes. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygott? Aye. Elmore? Aye. 
Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. I think we had 12 to 12 to 3. Because we have one absent. So motion carries. Good discussion, good comments, all legitimate concerns. Uh, we move forward. So I thank you. Very healthy. Uh, this time we go to a motion from the Planning Commission. We have actually two motions. And I, uh, Mr. Diddleman, or who's on it? Mr. Diddleman, you and Andy both? No, who's on Who's it? Just you. Who else? Joe. Joe. You want to make the motion? Yeah. I'd like to make the motion from the Planning Commission on behalf of them to uh, accept the preliminary plat for a tract of land located at 1601 South 74th Street and adjoining parcels, parcel numbers 07-140-2000-201, 07-140-001, 07-140-004, 07-14.0-200-032, and it's located in the C2 Heavy Commercial Zoning District at the intersection of Illinois 15 and 74th Street. I'd also like to uh, actually make a motion on 11C2. Is there any uh, objection if we do it together? Okay, go ahead, proceed. Can I do it without reading all the parcel numbers? No, no, no. Uh, same. Is that okay, Mr. Yeah, that's okay. We'll, we'll give you a buy there. Thank you. Again, on behalf of the Planning Commission, uh, we'd like to make a motion to accept the site plan and the landscape plan and your architectural elevations for 196,000 square foot Walmart Supercenter and a 1,500 square foot convenience store and fuel kiosk to be located on a tract of land located at 1601 South 74th Street and adjoining parcels. We also have from the Planning Commission uh, recommendations approved with the following stipulations. Add exterior appeal to the right and rear elevation in a convenience store. Add exterior appeal to the right elevation to the Walmart building and the motion carried uh, eight to nothing. Both those motions carried eight to nothing uh, by the Planning Commission. That's correct. We have a motion. We have a second. Second by Alderman Hazel, who also serves in that commission. Uh, any discussion? Roll call. Yes, sir. I'd like to ask these guys. These guys were in the meeting, planning meeting. Uh, did we get those recommendations okay? Okay. You have nothing else to add? The amended elevations were added to the drop box on Friday when we did the package. So they have met the conditions of the planning commission already. Okay, if there's no further questions or comments from either the team or the city council, roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Obian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygon? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries, so both, both motions carry, and uh, we move on. Page four of the agenda tonight, motions from finance. Uh, Alderman Kinsella, you again. Uh, I'd like to make, on behalf of finance committee, I make a motion to approve the contract with Musco Sports Lighting, LLC, for $359,900 for the Alderman, for the Lauderman Park Lighting Improvement Grant. Can you rename it? We have a motion by Alderman uh, Kinsella. Do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Schaefer. Discussion on this. This is uh, grant money, Debbie. I think uh, this is this is our match. Uh, twenty-five percent is Metro East Park. District. Yeah, but and then, but I mean, twenty-five percent was Metro East Park. Yeah, of that. Of okay. that. Okay. Okay. Very good. So we have a motion. and We have a second. Any further discussion? Uh, the lights that are out there. These. This is a necessary safety thing. Some of those are getting really old and. We've seen across the country some of those start to snap when they get too much stress on them. So this is very timely to get this done. Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Obian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Ga? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygon? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, Alderman Kinsella, if nobody objects, you want to do the next two together because they're both from the street department unless there's an objection. Thank you. 
Okay. Motion to approve a purchase of street department truck from state bid vendor for $26,385 and to approve a purchase of street department dump truck from the state bid vendor for $31,994. We have a motion from Alderman Consilla. Do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Goff. Do I hear discussion on these two items? They're in the budget. Uh, believe me, I've uh, been over the staff numerous times, only allowing them or asking them to bring nothing forward that isn't a must. And uh, these pieces of equipment are much needed. So, um, is there a truck that's day retired or something? One's about dead, isn't it? Probably Barry, 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 Barry. <laughs> retired is the right word. Jason, one to 1984, one to 1987. One's a 1984. It's replacing a one's a 1987. So it's, it's been a while. Uh, we have a motion. We have a second to approve those two truck low bids. Hearing no other questions or comments, roll call. Hazel. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Bittner. Aye. Randall. Aye. Tyler. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Ovian. Aye. Schaefer. Aye. Dentleman. Aye. Goff. Aye. Steele. Aye. Wygon. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Wellington. Aye. Barfield. Aye. Motion carried. Alderman Kinsella. Motion to approve closing three Commerce Bank accounts that were transferred to the City of Belleville upon the dissolution of Belleville Township, transferring the remaining funds to Bank of Edwardsville account. Motion by Alderman Consilla, second by Alderman Steele. Any discussion on that motion? Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Consilla? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygon? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. Alderman Wigington for streets and grades. Uh, Master Sawyer first. I'm sorry. Master Sawyer, Alderman Dentleman. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On behalf of the Mass Store Committee, I'd like to make a motion to approve the LTCP Phase 3 change orders on number 3, number 4, and number 6 from Air Plumbing in a total amount of $273,760.50. First <coughs> by Alderman uh, Dillman, second by Alderman Schaefer. Discussion? Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Obian? Aye. 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 <laughs> Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygon? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion well, carries. Now we go streets and grades. You got it. Oh, we have is, streets is, and grades. Is, is there any problem? Has anybody got objections to, to do the streets and grades motions together, or is there some problem? Okay, is that a problem? Anyone? No. Go ahead and proceed with that you block it. of uh, You got motions. it. On behalf of the Streets and Grades Committee, I make a motion to approve Illinois American Water Company to acquire an easement near Hecker Streets for proposed replacement of water mains. On behalf of Streets and Grades, I make a motion to approve an AMRIC estimate to install and upgrade lights at 1720 East State Route Team 15, Tip 14, understanding still working with IDOT to share costs. We have Streets and Grades. Make a motion to approve a parent low bidder for South Tide Side Park, park Improvements Tip 3. We have a motion on behalf of Streets and Grades. Make a motion to approve an ex ex excavating bid of $264,371.44 for Juanita Place Phase 3, Tip 3. And on behalf of Streets and Grades, I make a motion to approve joint agreement with IDOT and the City of Belleville for East A Street, Oak Street Project. So moved. Motion by Alderman Wigington. Do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Gansella. Do I hear discussion on any of these motions? I have from Streets and Grades. Yes. What is F, uh, 11 F, motion to approve a parent low bidder? What exactly does that mean? Well, we, we, they, there was it was relatively close to two bids at the lowest two bids. And uh, Tim, well, I mean, the, the price the price of what you're approving is $417,178. That should have been written in there uh, for Roger the Green. And, and so that was the low bidder of Metler Development. They've, they, they've done the three previous, or the two previous bathrooms right. for our parks. The bids were, the bids were just open today. Oh, okay. So, you know, and we said that because, you know, they were open today and in case there was anybody claiming that there was anything misrepresented, we just say this, if we've done that before, if you've noticed, we'll pair up a little better in case something were to come back in some question here. Okay. This is, from what we can see at this point, in less than 24-hour review of opening the bids, 
this is what we're bringing to you. Tim, what was that number? Tim, what was that number again? I'll, I'll go up here. Like Tim says, the was wasn't clear. Yeah. And, and, I, and the other thing, I, yeah, just let me clarify also, Scott. The other thing sometimes we use that language is because sometimes we get a contractor that's a little bitter we've never done business with before, and we're still checking on maybe at that point uh, to make sure that they can truly understand the scope of work and can handle it. So that's another reason why we say a parent low builder. Yeah, it's, it's usually the, lowest, the language lowest usually is bidder. parent low be, and, yeah, best possible bidder. So. Yeah. But the, the number is 417178 for Handler Development. Uh, the engineer's estimate was 464000 so it came in under. Okay, so we have uh, motions coming from Alderman uh, Wigington and Streets and Grades for all those, right? right. And he just read 1 through uh, 5 under 11 uh, F. Any other questions besides that? Okay, this roll call vote will approve all these all these motions. Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Obian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Ga? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygon? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. The motion's carried. I made the motion. Who made the second one? Ken Kinsella. Okay, Ken Kinsella. Thanks, Kenny. Okay. Okay, we move over to uh, page five under administration. First one is I'd ask for someone to make a motion to approve the change order number four with impact strategy for City Hall. Motion from Alderman Obia, do I hear a second? Second from Alderman Schaefer, do I hear discussion? Roll call, yes sir. Can you explain the amount for Kenny Vaughn, I'm gonna let you explain. He has a question about the amount. I think it's Uh, similar to the last change order we executed, this is a zero net cost increase for the contract. Uh, we started our project with a hundred thousand contingency. Uh, as you can see from the extensive list on page one, some of these are ads, some of these are minuses, but we're still underneath our contract amount. So there's no increase in contract prices. All right, that's nice. We're still watching it very closely. There's still a couple items. I will be honest with you all. We're probably going to be discussing in days ahead. We're looking at um, a window situation, and uh, that's once again part of the remodeling, renovating an over 60 year old building. So we have a motion and we have a second to uh, to deal with change order number four. If there's no further questions or comments, uh, I would ask for a roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dittleman? Aye. Ga? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygott? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. I now ask for a motion to approve the disposal agreement with waste management as in your packet. So here's the motion. Okay. Motion by Kinsella. Who is second? Alderman Tyler. Discussion on this uh, motion and recommendation? Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Ga? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygon? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigginton? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. At this time I'd ask for one more motion coming from administration. And that would be a motion to approve a $7,000 as levy for emergency one-night vouchers for extreme weather and general community assistance. Motion by Alderman Steele, second by Alderman Tyler. Discussion on this motion. Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Ga? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygon? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. This will be while I got it and don't lose it. Uh, emergency shelters. Uh, we're open today for extreme heat cooling sites. They'll be open tomorrow, and the way it looks through the end of the week. Uh, just be advised, and that's part of this situation here. When we find people who are on the street in extreme weather, uh, we do assist them and try to get them into one of these vouchers where they have a place to stay and they can get them out of the extreme dangerous conditions. So, just so you know, uh, it is going to be open. And we thank uh, Trinity Church and Salvation Army and the libraries and uh, PSOP for opening their doors today and in the days ahead and several days in the past already 
uh, from the extreme heat. We move on to Ardence's legal committee, uh, Alderman Wigington. Okay, thank you. Ardence and legal. <laughs> Probably want to do these separate. <laughs> okay, we'll do them separate. Uh, 11, 11 H on behalf of Ordinance and Legal Committee, I make a motion to approve revising Chapter 115, Peddlers and Solicitors, so moved. Motion by Alderman Wigginton to a second by Alderman Hazel. Do I hear discussion on this motion? Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Fittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygon? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigginton? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. Alderman? We have the Ordinance and Legal Committee. I make a motion to approve revising chapters 30.19, Standing Committees, 32.115, Plan Commission, and 32.037, Membership and Compensation. So moved. Motion by Alderman Wigginton, a second by Alderman Hazel. Discussion? Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygott? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigginton? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. Crime Free Housing Committee, Alderman Kinsella. I'd like to mention, on behalf of Crime Free Housing Committee, I make a motion to approve the crime-free ordinance to extend to the sunset date of October 31st, 2021. We have a motion by the Alderman Consilla representing the committee. Do I hear a second? Sorry. Second by Alderman Dittleman. Do I hear, okay, Alderman Barfield. I'm going to change that. He long time spent with that committee, that <laughs> situation. Uh, okay, hold on. Okay, we now open it up for, uh, go ahead and go first and we'll go to Kevin. I'd like to make a motion to amend the amount. The original motion. Okay, so uh, your amendment would be such as what? I'd like to make it a motion to approve crime free ordinance with no sunset. So we have an amendment to uh, change this with no sunset, uh, just exactly. enacted permanently. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Alderman Elmore. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, sir. Um, could we possibly, with uh, Alderman Tyler and Elmore's permission, Change that motion to just be made permanent. Yeah, that's effectively the same. Effectively the same. Removing the sunset date would make it permanent, permanent. subject to repeal. And, and, and it's and any ordinance is subject to repeal or dismiss, you know, or modifications at any time. Um, I, 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 let me just say this real quick. First of all, my sincere thanks. And this is this thing is working. It's always going to be monitored. My sincere thanks to the committee members who worked very hard to stay out in developing it. And I understood the desire to try it and test it out, you know. But it's had great results, thanks to Sergeant Hurling and Bob Sable and the other officers and so many of you. It, it's been a proven, uh, pr proven force that we did the right thing. Uh, but if it needs to be, if the committee comes back and recommends some changes, it can be modified at any time, just like ordinances we've modified here tonight. And that's that's your recommendations from the committee to the council to do that at any given time. So I think it's the right thing to do. I don't disagree. So we have a motion to, the amended motion is to make this permanent. Yes, sir. And we have a second for that. We vote on the, we, we vote on a motion to amend first. Uh, any other discussion on the amendment that we're going to vote on first? Hearing none, I'd ask for a roll call vote. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygott? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigginton? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Unanimous. Motion carries at this point for a, now we have to go back and vote on the original motion. Excuse yes. me, Your Honor. It, it seems to me that the point of order here would be that when we just voted to change to, to amend the motion that motion has been changed we now have to we have vote on the, the motion as changed uh, the yes. amendment has changed am i right so now we're on mr attorney that's correct now, now we're, we're call vote on the motion as amended as amended so you originally made the motion roger originally seconded the motion correct on the original motion and we now are voting on that motion with the amendment. Everybody understand? So we're making, we're, we're voting to approve crime-free housing permanently. 
Correct. Right. Everybody understand that? So we need to uh, the yes vote amends. The yes vote amends uh, to what the amendment just the yes vote. Yes vote extends it permanently. permanently. Okay. A little technicality here when you have amendments to vote on, but we're going to live through this. It'll be fine. This is good. Good exercise in Robert's rules. So if there's no further comments, roll call. Hazel. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Bittner. Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Obian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygott? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. Great job to the committee for those of you who are here. It's, this is a good tool and I'm, I'm proud of everybody. Uh, we, communications, we have done this evening. Uh, well, you've had plenty of roll call votes. Uh, petitions we have done. Resolutions, I'd ask for a motion to read by the title only. Resolution 3307. That's the only one. Do I hear a motion to do that? No, motion by Alderman Wigington. Do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Barfield. Do I hear discussion on resolution 3307? All in favor of reading by title only, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 14A, resolution 3307, resolution of the City of Belleville, Illinois, authorizing the execution of a local agency agreement for federal participation. We have, do I hear a motion? Motion to approve Alderman Wigington, second by Alderman Elmore, to approve resolution 3307. Discussion? Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentleman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygott? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, ordinances. I'd ask for a motion to read by title only. Ordinance 8067, 8068, 8069, 8070, and 8071. This motion request is to read by title only those motions. Alderman Wigginton, second by Alderman uh, Tyler, to read them as uh, a group and by title only. Is that okay? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 15A, Ordinance 8067-2017, a zoning ordinance in regards to 32 May 17 Walmart stores. 15B, Ordinance 8068-2017, an ordinance amending Title 11 Business Regulations, Chapter 115, Peddlers and Solicitors of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Belleville, Illinois, as amended by amending portions of sections thereof. 15C, Ordinance 8069-2017, an ordinance vacating a right-of-way adjacent to St. Clair County Parcel 08180108018 and 08180108019 in Belleville, Illinois. 15D, Ordinance 8070-2017, an ordinance revising Chapters 30.19 Standing Committees, 32.115 Plan Commission, and 32.037 Membership and Compensation. 15E, Ordinance 8071-2017, an ordinance extending Title 15 Land Usage Chapter 154 Property Maintenance Code Sections 154.40 through 154.56, Crime Free Housing Program of the Revised Code of Ordinances of Belleville, Illinois. Let me change this to the city. The references in that ordinance to the sunset date of October. to change the permit. Everybody understands that? Yeah. Per the earlier vote. We have a, do I hear a motion on these ordinances? Yes. We have, you're making a motion okay. to approve these ordinances as read. Second, Alderman Anthony. Discussion. Um, I was asleep at the switch when we were on ordinance and legal a minute ago. I noticed in, on um, the peddlers and solicitors ordinance, the original times, they were not allowed to, pe to uh, solicit after 5 p.m. But since we've done the codification of the ordinances, that has now been changed to 9 p.m. During the course of the uh, codification process, the uh, service provider made various recommended changes based upon case law that's evolved since the enactment of several of our ordinances. And that was one of them. There was some uh, case regarding the constitutionality of peddlers and solicitors that suggested that the appropriate hours to have would be nine to nine. 
So we were doing that in compliance with some case law. It just seems awful late for people to be going to, you know, elderly people's houses, especially in the winter when it's dark at 5 p.m. You know, well, I, I think the, uh, we, you have the ability, uh, as any resident does, to prohibit solicitation and also to control the times at your individual residence. You just have to put a uh, notification on your door. And it's all set forth, uh, the, the mechanism to do that is all set forth. We have a motion and we have a second to approve these ordinances as just read. Any further discussions? We do? Do we have? No, we have title only. Title, well, we, okay, we read it by title, but you read it. I'm sorry. Tyler and Anthony. Tyler and Anthony made the motion too. Sorry. Oh, I did not, I missed that, sorry. You're confusing me. <laughs> We're doing good. Okay. We have a motion and we have a second. I thought we did, but I messed it up before. Uh, motion and second to approve the ordinances as just read. Uh, 15A through 15E. If there's no further discussion, I'll call for a roll call vote on these ordinances. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentelman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygott? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. Any unfinished business? Any miscellaneous of new business? Motor fuel funds in the amount of <laughs> Jamie's not here. That's like the smallest motor fuel plane amount I've ever seen in my life. So I'll ask that we approve that. I don't have the clerk, the finance director's not here today. It's on the claim sheet. It's on the claim sheet too. Very good for you to check your motion. I can still a second by Hazel to approve that super low motor fuel claims. Um, no questions other than the fact that she checked it on the claim sheet. Roll call. Hazel? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Bittner? Aye. Randall? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Ovian? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Dentelman? Aye. Gah? Aye. Steele? Aye. Wygott? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Wigington? Aye. Barfield? Aye. Motion carries. We have no reason for an executive session tonight, so I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. Sure. Motion by uh, Randall, second by Elmore. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much.